Ghouls. The Undead. Walkers. Zombies. All are names for the nightmarish creatures that come alive after death. But is it possible for an apocalyptic rise of the living dead? Are there such things as zombies? More importantly, are you a zombie? Welcome to Zombie World. Our journey begins with Haiti. A Caribbean country located west of the Dominican Republic, Haiti has a population of 10 million people. Well known for its ancient folklore, Haiti has a long-running tradition of voodoo and sorcery. Sorcerers, also called Bacar, are said to be able to bring back humans from the dead. They use a powder which has a mix of many ingredients, two of which are tetratotoxin and deterostromonium. These are two chemicals that are poisonous to humans and can cause severe paralysis, delirium, hallucinations, and death. A Bacar would sprinkle this powder onto a living victim, who would become fully paralyzed, and then they would be buried in the ground. If the victim was administered a non-lethal dose of this powder, it would give the appearance of biological death by seriously slowing the heart rate and respiratory rate. After days, the Bacar would dig up the burial site to find that the victim is alive and breathing, meaning that they had survived the zombification process. This is where the tradition of zombies began. From the 1930s to the 1960s, the Haitian culture of zombies began making its way into the Western culture through books, comics, movies, and accumulating in the 1968 movie by George A. Romero. Night of the Living Dead. The zombie craze had begun. Over the course of many, many years, zombies have become a fictional phenomenon that stimulated the imagination of science fiction fans everywhere. With modifications to zombies coming in pop culture over the decades, zombies have become a monster that would haunt the dreams of many people around the world. But these creatures are just fictional, make-believe. There's no way they could exist in our world, right? All zombie outbreaks that you've heard of have probably had a common cause, an infection. Usually these come in the form of a common cold, but sometimes they can be deadly. In World War I, 15 million people died on the front lines of the blood-spattered fields across the earth. Within two years after the war was over, one single killer killed over four times as many people as the war itself. Its name was the Spanish Flu. It was a virus that at its peak killed one million people per week for six straight months single-handedly infecting 40% of the world's population and fatally taking out 5% of it. Imagine if the Spanish flu virus produced different symptoms, like delirium, paralysis, reanimation. Would we have witnessed a zombie outbreak? Let's pretend that human cells are like locked rooms. Nutrients that the cell needs are the only key capable of opening the lock and entering the room. Viruses work by mimicking the shape of the nutrients that the cell needs to survive, just like a lockpick mimics a key. The virus then inserts its genetic code into the host cell, and the cell becomes a factory for manufacturing more of the virus. The cell could then eventually build up enough pressure to explode and release all the newly manufactured viruses to infect other cells. Even if a virus was able to infect yourself, your community, your country, or the world, it wouldn't be able to produce zombie-like symptoms, right? I mean, we control our minds and our bodies. Surely no disease could override this control we have over ourselves. Toxoplasma Gandhi. Haven't heard of it? Well, you probably should have. Considering that there's a 66% chance that you are currently infected. This is a parasite that controls the minds of rats to get them eaten by nearby cats, who then pass it on to us humans. Now there are other examples of these kinds of diseases in the biosphere, like a type of fungi called cordyceps. An ant will stumble upon a spore of this fungi, where it then travels to the brain and reproduces. The fungi then controls the mind of the ant to climb up a tall plant and bite down on the underside of a leaf. 
The fungus then multiplies and builds up enough pressure inside the ant's skull to break it open. It then grows out to the top of the deceased ant's skull, where it can release spores onto the ground below and infect more victims. But what makes diseases spread? Think about it. Because there's one very important factor that can be the difference between infecting one person and infecting millions. Now, what is the first thing you do when you're sick? You either go to your room and isolate yourself, or you go to the doctor to be treated. But what if you don't know you're infected with the pathogen and experience no symptoms? You will probably continue about your day and unknowingly spread the disease to people you interact with. That is called the incubation period, where a host is infected with the disease but experiences no symptoms. Diseases like HIV and rabies have incubation periods that last up to several months. Maybe the Walking Dead series got it right. Maybe all of us have already been exposed to a pathogen with an incubation time of several years. But why does a zombie bite seem to infect and transform a human into a zombie within hours? Well, the zombie might not be inserting an infection into the host, it might be injecting venom. One of the most lethal venomous animals is the box jellyfish. A sting from this jellyfish can cause immense pain and even death. So these modern zombies could just be killing humans with venom and waiting for the immune system of the humans to get weak enough for the virus in their brains to take over their mind. So what does this all mean? Well, it just means that one day, if a particular strain of virus mutates in just the right way, then we could soon be living in a zombie world. Make sure to listen to the extended Zombie World podcast on iTunes, which you can check out in the link below. And you can also subscribe and like this video if you want to, and you can also just watch another one if you want to as well. Anyways, I'll see you next time.